All right, good to see everybody here again. We're going to begin with prayer, and then we're going to dive into our introduction and lesson. Uh, I have a couple of copies here. Let me see here. I have one copy here. There are some more in the back. Does anyone need a copy of the workbook? Does everybody have a copy of the workbook? Okay, so what we're going to do, we're starting a new quarter, and the material that I put together is called Standing on the Edge of Eternity. Um, this is going to be a, a, a new lesson for me or a new workbook for me. I just put it together and uh, hope and pray that it will benefit you as we talk about heaven and hell. Uh, that was the original goal, and then I thought about, you know, can I talk about heaven and hell for, for three months? So how do we go about putting all this together? And so uh, we're going to talk about life and death and certainly heaven and hell and all that's in, uh, included in that. So I'm really looking forward to this study uh, as we begin. Let's go to God in prayer, and then we're going to begin with the introduction. Let's go to God and let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you again for the gift of life. We know how fragile life truly is. We know how short our time on this side of life is. Help us, Father, to, no matter what, trust in you. Help us to be confident in our salvation. Help us never to leave nor depart from your son, Jesus. He is our shepherd, and help us to always listen to his voice as his sheep. Help us, Father, as we navigate our way through so many different cultural storms and challenges, health issues, disappointments, and so many things that can make our journey in this life difficult at times. Help us, Father, to look above and to keep our eyes fixed on your Son, Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Be with those, Lord, who, are, who don't have that much more time left on this side of life. And give them peace and give them comfort and help them at this time. We are so thankful, Father, for the wonderful blessings you give to us. Continue to be with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I had the opportunity to see um, Sister Jackie a couple of days ago on Thursday, just for a few minutes, or on Wednesday actually, and I know many of you have done that as well. Uh, Kevin did say I could mention to the, to the congregation, you guys already know this, I think most of you do, uh, if you want to go see her, just send him a text message. Um, and you can. Uh, we were going to plan on going over there after services, but um, some other members have already beat us. So he said there's going to be a lot of people actually coming over today, so we'll have to do that another time. But what a blessing it is to be able to encourage our sister uh, and, and uh, our other family members in Christ as they go through this difficult period. So if you have your workbook, open it up, please, to page number three. I just want to read this, and we're going to begin, and I want to read the scriptures as well. Maybe you did not get a chance to go through the introduction. We're all standing on the edge of eternity, and by that, what I mean, that one day we will die. Death is a fact of life, and sometimes we can ignore it, and we can be naive about it. One day we'll die, and then we'll begin a great journey unlike any other we have ever experienced. I love taking trips. Anybody else like taking trips? Anybody want to go on a trip next year? Do like a road trip? Nobody. All right. There we go. I got one. All right. Brandon, you and I, we're going, all right? So I love taking trips. Uh, travel to Africa and Germany. Uh, Mexico, Canada, Jamaica, Israel, and to a number of states. But the journey all of us will one day experience will be truly unique. It will be the ultimate trip. When I, I'm talking about when we die. When we die, we'll leave this physical realm and enter into the spiritual realm. Companies like Uber, Southwest, or Amtrak will not get us to this destination. Rather, the angels will usher the faithful into this journey. We look over in Luke chapter 16, and we're going to be studying from Luke chapter 16 later on in the quarter. In Luke chapter 16, we read about the rich man, and we read about Lazarus. And I mention that here because in Luke chapter 16, uh, beginning in verse number 19, it says, Now there was a rich man, and he habitually dressed in purple and fine linen, joyously living in splendor every day and a poor man named Lazarus was laid at his gate covered with sores and longing to be fed with the crumbs which were falling from the rich man's table besides even the dogs were coming and licking his sores now the poor man died listen to this and was carried away by the angels isn't that amazing carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom that's why I said it's going to be the ultimate trip it's going to be it's going to be unbelievable but we are going to experience it. So in this class, we'll be studying what the Bible has to say about heaven and about hell. And as I thought about this subject, I began considering other aspects that need to be discussed outside of the, the final destination places of heaven and hell. I thought about our lives now, my life, and how we live with a view toward eternity, which I think would be really hard, salvation, 
uh, preparing for death. What happens after we die? And what the day of judgment will look like and be like? And I, I searched the, to, to look for s- different kinds of workbooks that were out there to, to get some ideas or maybe even potentially use one of them. And I reached out to a number of preachers and didn't really have that much success. Uh, <laughs> one of the preachers said to me, the more I study about heaven, the less I know. And I thought that was interesting too. Uh, while we talk about heaven and hell in sermons or in a Bible class, and certainly I've, I've done sermons on those, probably have done fewer sermons dealing with the topic of hell. And I think that would probably be the case for many preachers today. Uh, but while we've done sermons uh, on those, I didn't really find much with respect to an actual workbook. Uh, and so that's what we're going to be talking about. So it's going to be an adventure for all of us as well. So we read about, obviously, heaven and hell with Christ and eternity also in the scriptures. Uh, Let me just read these here for you. You can just read along. Matthew 25. Then he will also say to those on his left, Apart from me, accursed ones, and to the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. And we'll talk about that. Hell being prepared for the devil and his angels. These will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life. So you see eternal punishment and eternal life. If your right hand makes you stumble, cut it off and throw it from you, for it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. That's how serious this really is. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That's Jesus speaking there. In Acts chapter 1, we read this in our Bible reading, and after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. They also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? I believe those men were angels. This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. And that's a very important verse that we'll talk quite a bit later on in the quarter. Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 through 23. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. That's a pretty powerful statement, isn't it? For me to live is Christ, And to die is gain. But if I am to live on in the flesh, this will mean fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which to choose. But I'm hard-pressed from both directions, having the desire to depart and be with Christ, for that is very much better. Yet to remain on in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. Luke chapter 23. And he was saying, Jesus, the thief on the cross, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And he said to him, truly I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. What an amazing thing to hear from Christ. And then 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. For after all, it is only just for God to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to give relief to you who are afflicted, and to us as well when the Lord Jesus will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. Dealing out retribution to those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. These will pay the penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes to be glorified in his saints on that day and to be marveled at among all who have believed for our testimony to you was believed. And so that just kind of gives us a little sample. There are many other passages that we read about in the Bible that that give us instruction about life and and death and heaven and hell. And so we're going to be talking about that. If you want to turn back real quickly to the uh, table of contents here, uh, I've put together 12 lessons. So we have, uh, actually we have 12 classes because we have a gospel meeting next month. By the way, don't forget about that gospel meeting. It begins uh, that first week in November. So we have 12 lessons. That's why we're doing the introduction in lesson one. And that will help us to make sure that we don't get behind and we, need, we just need to do one lesson per week. And so today we're going to look at the facts of life. Uh, we're going to talk about death, the king of terrors. Do you believe in forever? Reaching the goal of heaven. I'm going to heaven, but what about now? What happens after we die? The return of Jesus. 
questions about hell, Gehenna, the devil and his angels, God and his holy angels, heaven is for real, do you want to go there? And then big questions about heaven. So I've, I've put actually quite a bit of material in here, and it's better to have more material than not to have enough material where I stand here at 1015 and say, what do you guys want to do next? So there's lots of reading that hopefully you guys will do. Uh, and so I want to talk a little bit about uh, just some questions that you may have as we think about heaven and hell. So on page number four, uh, I asked you guys the question, and some of you hopefully have uh, been able to um, consider some things. I'm going to get a pen here, and uh, I'm curious to see what questions you might have had or questions you have heard from others. I googled questions people have about heaven. I saw one uh, <laughs> one article that had like 25, 26 questions. Uh, so people have lots of questions. Uh, but when it comes to heaven, what are some questions that you have had uh, or maybe uh, other people that you've talked to? And I'm curious to see. We may be able to address some of these, and hopefully we'll touch on some as well. Anyone? Any questions? Yes. Okay. All right, so I'm writing these down. Do we go immediately after, de after death to heaven? And will we know one another? Good. <laughs> all right, will we only praise God all day? All right, good. <laughs> I understand. All right, Nick? Because it's a sad thing, I get it, but her dog died, and she oh. said that she can't wait to see her dog again. Yeah. So what about pets? Yeah. Yeah, we won't answer any of these today, but you have to come back every Sunday, all right? Every Sunday, you got to come back now, all right? And heaven's like less than nine and ten, so you got to come back for every class for like three months. Okay, what else? Like, do I have to live in the city? <laughs> Can I live off property, right? Right. <laughs> All right, yeah, so yeah, that's going to be interesting as well. What's that going to look like? Go ahead, brother. Or stated that their belief is that what will happen in heaven is just an extension of what we love to do here. Yeah read a book all day or we'll be yeah. able to walk through fields of flowers. Or yeah. yeah, that's right. I don't think Bluebell ice cream is going to be in heaven, right? I'm sorry. Okay, let's continue on here. That's right. Yeah, so we're just going to kind of keep on doing the things that we've already been doing. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> you mentioned up front, um, will we recognize each other? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's, a, that's, a, that's a question that a lot of people have. Um, will we know one another? Are we going to go there immediately after death? Are we going to praise God all day? Or, or what are we going to do, basically? What, you know, what are we going to do? Uh, and that's a hard thing for us to think about, the idea and the concept of uh, eternity. Um, will things kind of remain the same? Any other, any other questions? Oh, yes, ma'am. That is a, that's a really big deal. That's right. That's a really big deal. I got so many questions. Yeah, are we actually going to remember our questions, right? Or will we just be overwhelmed and all of that will just kind of fall by the wayside? That's a great thought. Uh, oh, go ahead. No sadness and no sorrow in heaven. Yeah. Will we not be aware of our loved ones that we've left behind? Yeah, that's right. So aware of, of loved ones who are not in heaven but who are eternally separated from God. I saw, no, I'm sorry, go ahead, brother. The streets are going to be paved with gold and all this, but this is a spiritual place. So... What is it really going to be like? So understanding that language, right? Yeah, with the pearly gates and the streets of gold. Good. What else, brother? Do we lose our free will in heaven, or can we still fall from grace? Oh, that's a great question, yeah. That's an excellent question. All right. Uh, good. What, any other questions? Yes, ma'am. I think that's along with what Joanne said, that um, once we're in heaven, once the Lord comes back, well, will we remember any of our time that we had on earth? Any part of our life? Okay. Any part of Will we remember any of our time? All right. Great. Oh, man, this is, this is adding up here. We're going to have some good classes. Anything else? 
Yes, sir. No. For example, if the child dies, are they still a child with a mature soul? Yeah, intellect with their soul. Yeah, the idea of what happens with uh, with the children. Yeah, that's a great question. Yes, sir. Yeah, this, there's a couple of different opinions I've heard on this, but what happens from the time we die until the judgment day? Okay. Yeah, we'll, we're we're going to talk about that too. Yeah, time between death and judgment day. Did I see another hand? I guess some other religions say that what well, what well, happened to me at first. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a, a topic that Kevin's gonna be talking about in his class. Um the idea of heaven on earth. Yeah, that's something that's that's popular as well. Uh we'll address that as well too. Uh, yes, sir. The spirit nature of God and heaven bounded by time. Okay. All right. All right, so we got a lot of questions here. Good. Anyone else before we move on? Because we got to get to some other thoughts. You got another one? One more. This question asked, um, when the Bible says that he forgives us and removes sin but then there's a verse that talks about every account can be noted. Yeah, that's a question um, with respect to the judgment and how we're going to have to give uh, an account of our deeds, good and bad. Uh, I believe that's Ecclesiastes 12. One more. When it states that, that, like you said, that every Christian, we must give an account to God, that since the blood of Jesus is constantly redeeming us as a Christian also, how do we give an account to God? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that connects with that. Good. All right. Thank you for those questions. Now let's go to the other side. When it comes to hell, you got one more question. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, brother. When you die, you go to heaven. The you. All right. Yeah, we'll talk. So, we'll, yeah, we'll talk about that. So, death and, and judgment and all that that's entailed with that, right? Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely talk about that. Did you have one more? Oh, uh, okay. So, when it comes to oh, let me put uh, some of the things up here. Um, will we live human lives? I think somebody kind of mentioned something like that, right? Uh, will we have memories of our lives? Those, that's a common question. Uh, will heaven be boring? A lot of people say, oh, man, heaven? I'm going to be there forever? Man, I thought worship was already hard enough. Three hours or one hour. Man, forever? That's how people view it sometimes. I'm serious. That's how people view it. And people view it that way because we're so carnal-minded. And, you know, we only think about it's. We have no idea how awesome it really is going to be. But we are so connected to this earthly tent. And that's what often gets in our way. And I think that's why we often struggle. And that's why we're going to do a lesson. Heaven is for real. Do we really want to go there? Because uh, a lot of times people just kind of say, man, this is, I mean, I got, I mean, this is kind of good right now. Because we get, we get so attached. So people have this question. Will heaven be boring? What are we going to do for eternity? That's a popular question. All right, so let's talk real quickly here. We've got to move forward. Um, questions about hell? Yes, sir. Uh, go ahead. You had Your hand was first, and then you, Brother Steve, Stephen. Go ahead. I made you forget. I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead, Brother. Not temperature. At different degrees. <laughs> different levels. Degrees of punishment. That's what, yeah, degrees of punishment. That's a, that's a popular question. Uh, what's another question you guys have? Yes, sir. You remember? Yeah, I I don't understand the uh, torture forever. It's hard to understand why God would do that to anyone. Yeah. Like the worst thing you will ever do to a person is execute them. Okay. So that will help us with understanding some things about God. Uh, why would God do that? That's a popular question. Good. What else? Any other? Oh, yes, sir. 
purgatory where I can go to for a while. Yeah. And then eventually my those sins are, I guess, are erased and I'm able to go to heaven. So we'll talk about that as well. Yeah, we'll talk about purgatory as well. Any other uh, questions about hell? Do you have one? About the bottom of the and I, I had a cousin that just was so dramatic about that. Sure. Yeah. So the, the nature and what that's going to be like, that's good. Uh, anyone else? Yes, sir. Question. Second uh, Thessalonians talks about eternal destruction. You know, how can destruction be eternal? <laughs> that's good. All right. Eternal destruction. Good. All right. So those are all great questions, and I think people have these questions. Uh, one question doesn't really exist. You know, there's a movement out there that really the whole idea, this whole concept of hell, maybe it's just, you know, maybe preachers have made this up. Because think about it, people do struggle with this idea, right? How could God send people to a place of punishment for eternity? So for a lot of people, is hell even, is hell even real? Uh, is it fair? That's a popular question that many people have. Is hell fair? Uh, and will it actually be for eternity? Uh, is it just going to be kind of for a short time, which would still be bad, or is it actually for eternity? So that's what we're going to be talking about. So um, I, I'm really excited about this. i got a lot of work to do, and, uh, and I want you guys to, to join in, in in the study. So let's turn over to Lesson 1 here, and uh, we're making good on time here. So the introduction I'll read to you or just kind of relay what was going on here. Maybe some of you guys have experienced something like this as well. Um, you can call it a, a wake-up moment. Uh, or a reminder about how fragile life really is, okay? In 2014, uh, it reminded me of, I had an event that reminded me of a simple fact of life, that one day I'm going to die. June 17, 2014, I was supposed to do a, a, a Bible study with Max Dawson on our Buy the Book program on the Holy Spirit, I think from Acts chapter 2, and then that weekend we're going to have Caleb Churchill down for uh, for a, uh, I think for a teen weekend. So one of our deacons uh, and his family were getting ready to move. They asked if I could help them out. Uh, I said, sure. We got the, the U-Haul truck loaded up. Uh, they invited us to go out for uh, burgers. <laughs> I you absolutely have to go out for burgers. I said, sure. And then, uh, I don't know if I told you that, Nikki, but um, uh, later on that day, uh, I, I needed to go to the gym, felt a little bloated. So being on the camera, I wanted to go to the gym and sweat a little bit. Anyway, while I was jogging on the treadmill, Everything just kind of changed. Face started hurting, teeth started hurting, sweating profusely. I mean, like really sweating, and I felt really fatigued. So long story short, I ended up having a blood clot in, uh, in my right coronary artery. I've shared this with some of you, and maybe I've, I've talked about it in sermons as well here. And so I was 36 at the time, and what's interesting about that, I was thinking about this here recently too. I, I never had like a, a panic attack or anything like that. You know, thinking about all of what was happening and just... You know, when something traumatic like that happens, you know, you, your mind does start thinking about how much time do I really have left? Maybe I don't have that much time left. And one of the biggest challenges, I think, particularly for young people, is this idea that I have plenty of time. And it's just a reality. We don't know how much time that we actually had have. So I, I did begin to ask questions. How much time do I have left? Uh, and what is going to happen to Joshua and Nikki if I die? Uh, and what about my work as a preacher? Um, you know, there are lots of different questions that, that I've had. And that, that event there, there are certain just life events uh, that just will always stick with you. It's like 9-11. Uh, you will never forget where you were. You will always remember that. Or if something unfortunately tragic has happened or a loss of a loved one or a child, you're never going to forget those things. But something that has also kind of woke you up or have wake, you know, kind of made you more aware, and all right, this is actually getting really real. And so my mind also went to the book of Ecclesiastes. So turn over there, please. Um, this is a great book. I, I read it Saturday, uh, just read it all the way through, and it's a, it's a very humbling book as well. Uh, Stephen Estes taught it, uh, I think, uh, two quarters ago uh, here on a, on a Wednesday. And, and Solomon shares some things about life. And I asked you guys to... Uh, before we actually dived in, looking at some of the passages, um, what thoughts, just with what you know about Ecclesiastes, um, came to your mind as you think about life and what the preacher 
uh, wants us to know. Now, what were some thoughts? Real quickly here, what, was, what, were, what were some thoughts that just kind of popped into your mind as you think about this book? All is vanity, All is vanity right? Yeah, he start, he's going to start off like that, right? All is vanity. What are we doing here, right? Everything just kind of revolves. Everything continues on uh, as is. What else comes to mind when you think about this book? I've been there. I've done that. I can do man. I did all of it times 50 and love t shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it all. That's right. The preacher said, I, I've done it all. I've experienced it all. Uh, and, I've, and I keep coming back to the same conclusion, right? Very good. What else? I see, see a hand up. Yeah. That's right. Remember the creator in the days of our youth and the fact that our bodies are going to wear out. Is that what you said? Or that, yeah, just understanding that fact as well. That's right. Uh, what else? Anything else? Comes to mind? Yes, sir. On this earth, there are cycles that keep repeating themselves. Yeah. Planting, harvesting, planting, harvesting, planting, harvesting. Mm-hmm. And as we are involved in these things, we really have little impact on the, the end result. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Did I see another hand back there? Yes, ma'am. That's right. That's right. Life is short and, and death is real. That's right. It's true. And, you know, it's, it's more than just a, a line. Um, it, it really is. At the end of the day, nothing matters except to fear God and keep his commandments. So looking at the bigger picture of life, right? Fearing God and keeping his commandments. Okay. Uh, Nikki, then Tanya, and then we'll move forward. Um, one of the ones I wrote down was to enjoy life because death is imminent. Just enjoy life. Yeah. And Enjoy life. That's right. Brandon, we got to get that trip ready, man. We just, oh, I don't know. We're going to do a trip together. Yeah, we got to enjoy life. That's right. You just said enjoy life. We're going to, all right, Tanya. Yeah, so you got to enjoy life. There's got to be some balance with that. And uh, the, the preacher is going to really set some things up for us. And so uh, as I went to this health crisis, I was reminded by Solomon about, I like to call them the facts of life. And as we think about heaven and hell, we need to consider these facts of life. So before we dive into answering those questions that you guys have brought up, we do need to talk about life, and we need to talk about death. So turn over to page number eight here. Now, I understand, and by no means am I trying to make light of this. Uh, I know we've had a couple of laughs, uh, but, but life is valuable, and, and death is very difficult at times to, to comprehend and really to put our hands around. And so look at Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Uh, verses 1 through 4. Uh, Solomon does remind us of some things, as you guys have already mentioned, in Ecclesiastes chapter 1. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What advantage does man have in all his work, which he does under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. Also, the sun rises and the sun sets, and hastening to its place, it rises again. Things just continue on. Uh, and so he, he just talked about this in the first four verses, really in the, uh, in the entire chapter. And what we can learn about life uh, is that as he begins, he sees that indeed, you know, it just continues on. And, and we're going to learn some more things about this uh, here in just a minute. I, I do want to share with you something else that stood out to me yesterday for a minute, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny here, it was, it was depressing. And I'm being serious about this because, I mean, do you guys ever think like that? I'm not going to ask anyone's age. I'm 41. Uh, but, you know, I mean, you start thinking about life. So I, I, I view life like, a, you know, if, if you're in four quarters, this may not be the best example. But, you know, if hopefully if we get to live to be 80 or even more, you know, it's, it's half of my life is it's already done. Third quarters. I'm, I'm in the third quarter right now. So hopefully we'll get overtime, but, you know, we don't know. But these verses, look at Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 3. Solomon said, I explored with my mind how to stimulate my body with wine while my mind was guiding me wisely, and how to take hold of folly until I could see what good there is for the sons of men to do under heaven. Here's the statement that really got me. The few years of their lives. He just keeps saying that over and over again. The few years of of their lives. Look at chapter 5, and I want you to read, or I want you to look at uh, verse number 18. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse number, uh, verse number 18. He says, Here is what I have seen to be good and fitting, to eat, to drink, and enjoy oneself, and all one's labor in which he toils under the sun during the few years of his life. There it is again, which God has given him for this is his reward. And then in chapter 6 and verse number 12, For who knows what, what is good for a man during his lifetime? During the few years of his feudal life, he will spend them like a shadow. For who can tell a man what will be after him under the sun? And so that really stood out to me, that this idea of just a few years of life. And when you really put it into perspective, that's what we have. Uh, our lives at times can feel, and it's interesting how we kind of complain about things sometimes. You know, how, you know, Things can become boring or challenging or whatever, but hey, we're still alive, and it's a blessing to be alive and to have and to have life. And so uh, Solomon helps us to see number one that you know things just kind of kind of remain and go on the same. And you look at point number two under the lesson throughout the book, he obviously discusses life, and I'll kind of share some of those verses with you. Uh, a part of the discussion about life is the reality of death, and so I ask you guys to read. Uh, there's five passages here. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 2, and let's look at verse number 12. And um, I ask you guys just to be ready to talk about this. And from these five uh, passages, we can basically get about five thoughts um, that I'm going to give to you that you can fill in next. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, So I turn to consider wisdom, madness, and folly. For what will the man do who will come after the king except what has already been done? And I saw that wisdom excels folly as light excels darkness. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walks in darkness. And yet I know that one fate befalls them both. Then I said to myself, as the fate of the fool, as is the fate of the fool, it will also befall me. Why then have I been extremely wise? So I said to myself, this too is vanity. For there is no lasting remembrance of the wise man as with the fool. Inasmuch as in the coming days all will be forgotten, and how the wise man and the fool alike die. So what stands out to you in those verses there? Anything? They're pretty, I think a lot of things are pretty clear, but when you're reading that, anything that really stood out to you? Or what do we see here about death? Go ahead. We all, it's it's going to happen. Yeah, that's right. We're all going to die. That's right. Um, it, it's going to happen to the fool uh, and to the wise man. And even the idea that um, all will be forgotten, and we've seen that. That happens in life as well, right? In the process of time, you do kind of forget about what others have done and, uh, during their lives after they have died. Yes, sir. a great point yeah wisdom is certainly good it's valuable we should hold on to it uh, but but death is still going to happen and absolutely it's still better than being foolish uh, and yet death is still going to happen that's right uh, look at chapter 3 and verse number 1 there is an appointed time for everything and there is a time for every event under heaven a time to give birth and a time to die a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted a time to kill and a time to heal a time to tear down and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to shun embracing, a time to search and a time to give up as lost, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear apart and a time to sew together, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. So just thinking about all this, you know, we live in a world and there's certainly times for, uh, for, for everything, and that includes death. It is a part of life, and this isn't always uh, and something appealing to hear or to consider, but he's making it very clear this is going to happen, and it's something that we all need to be aware of. Look over in chapter 9, in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, and look at verse number 1. I think we have time to read these here. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, and look at verse number 1. He says, For I have taken all this to my heart and explained it that righteous men, wise men, and their deeds are in the hand of God, 
Man does not know whether it will be love or hatred. Anything awaits him. It is the same for all. There is one fate for the righteous and for the wicked, for the good, for the clean, and for the unclean, for the man who offers a sacrifice and for the one who does not sacrifice. As the good man is, so is the sinner. As the swearer is, so is the one who is afraid to swear. This is an evil in all that is done under the sun, that there is one fate for all men. Furthermore, the hearts of the sons of men are full of evil, and insanity is in their hearts throughout their lives. Afterwards, they go to the dead. For well, whoever is joined with all the living, there is hope. Surely a live dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know they will die, but the dead do not know anything, nor have they any longer a reward, for their memory is forgotten. Indeed, their love, their hate, and their zeal have already perished, and they will no longer have a, a share in all that is done under the sun. Go then, eat your bread in happiness, and drink your wine with a chill for heart, for God has already approved your works. Let your clothes be white all the time, and let not oil be lacking on your head. Enjoy life with the woman whom you love all the days of your fleeting life, which he has given to you under the sun. For this is your reward in life, and in your toil in which you have labored under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For there is no activity, or planning, or knowledge, or wisdom in Sheol where you are going. I again saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, and the battle is not to the warriors. And neither is bread to the wise, nor wealth to the discerning, nor favor to men of ability. For time and chance overtake them all. Moreover, man does not know his time, like fish caught in a treacherous net, and birds trapped in a snare. So the sons of men are ensnared at an evil time when it suddenly falls on them. So what stands out to you, looking at those verses, as you think about life and as you think about death? We've got to move quickly here. Any thoughts? Yes, sir. So good and bad things happen uh, to everybody. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, time and chance, that's a, it's a great point to, to hold on to. Time and chance happen to all. Sometimes we can't always explain why certain things happen. We do, should, we do need to leave room for time and chance too, right? Uh, we're, you know, unfortunately, things can happen. Um, anything else in these verses here? Any thoughts? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, life is fleeting, so enjoy it. Uh, one of the things that's interesting, um, uh, I was reading something on uh, LinkedIn where, you know, one of the things Americans struggle with, you ready for this? We struggle with taking vacation time. Uh, and there's something, isn't that interesting? Uh, you know, give me a vacation time, I'm going to take all of it. I mean, you know, uh, maybe too fast, but, you know, it's interesting how vacation time is to be used for, eh, you know, vacation. <laughs> take a little break from work. Uh, and there's something I think there with this idea, enjoy your family. They won't be with you forever. Enjoy your wife, enjoy your husband, enjoy your kids, have some fun. And I know we have to work, we have to pay the bills and things like that, but, you know, when you start thinking about death and we're just running out of time. So that's something important for us to think about. Look at chapter 11 and verses 9 and 10. Chapter 11, verses 9 and 10. Rejoice, young man, during your childhood, and let your heart be pleasant during the days of, of young manhood. And follow the impulses of your heart and the desires of your eyes. Yet know that God will bring you to judgment for all these things. So remove grief and anger from your heart and put away pain from your body because childhood and the prime of life are fleeting. And so to me, that's a, that's a powerful text as well. He's not just saying go out and live a life of sin. He's not saying that at all, right? He's reminding us and reminding his, his readers you are going to stand before God one day. You will be judged. You will die, and you will also be judged. So be wise. And as what Sister Jane Ella mentioned in chapter 12, look at what he says in chapter 12. He just continues this thought, essentially, remember also your Creator and the days of your youth before the evil days come and the years draw near when, you'll say, when you will say, I have no delight in them. Look at verse number, uh, verse number 7. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was. And the Spirit will return to God who gave it. And so from these verses here, let me just give you some thoughts to think about. Uh, number one, death happens to all. And what that means is that it's actually going to happen to me. Um, it's going to happen to you. And that's sometimes hard for us to fully register that we think we have enough time, but not necessarily. Number two, death is a normal part of life. 
we should be willing to talk about this. It's a part of life that we need to discuss and talk about and have a good understanding. Think about this for a second. You understand people have an exit strategy, right? Uh, whether it's like with retirement and things like that, people have an exit strategy. Uh, or if somebody's going to get another job, they figure out, okay, I need another job before I leave this job. They have what's called an exit strategy. Well, think about this. What's our exit strategy for our lives? We need to be preparing for this because it's going to happen. Number three, enjoy your life while you can if you want to write these down in the thought section because time and chance happen to all. Number four, we will all be judged by God. That is something that will take place. And then finally, that's why we need to remember our Creator. And so what Solomon is helping us to see here is that these are just some facts of life. These are things that are going to happen to us. And so we're going to experience death, if you turn over to page 9, uh, unless we're alive at the return of Christ. And maybe the bigger question we all need to consider is how we will respond to this reality. Let me ask you here real quickly, we've got a couple minutes left here. Um, how, when you have talked to people about death, or maybe yourself, if you're willing to open up, um, how have you seen people respond to this fact of life? That death is real, that it's going to happen. How have you seen people, we've got to move fast, go ahead. Don't want to talk about it, right? Hey, let's just change the subject, right? How about those cowboys, right? Let's just talk about something else, right? What's another? How's another, uh, other people respond? Uh, so I definitely agree with that. And since, since I'm a social worker, I've spent a lot of time talking to families about preparing for end of life while you have an opportunity to do it. Um, and trying to make it, you can actually make it fun. I know it sounds weird, but because it's going to happen, you want to be able to plan for certain things while you have the, your faculties to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, there needs to be some planning. Uh, who helped, who kind of made some preparations before they died? I think about one man in the Old Testament. I think about Joseph. Didn't he give instructions? Here's what I want you to take my bones. He made preparation. And that's, that's normal, as you said. It's something that we should do. Any other ways you've seen people respond to death? Yes, yes, ma'am. Real quickly. Yeah. yeah, it's it's scary. It's scary, right? Yeah, it's scary. And that's what we're going to talk about next Sunday. Yeah, we can worry about it. It's it's the king of terrors. We don't have any experience with it. So um, something to, to think about, um, you know, sometimes people can ignore it. Sometimes people fear it. Sometimes people are naive. Uh, that's what I put down in those thoughts there. Look, we can't be naive about this reality. Uh, as much as, you know, vitamin D is very beneficial for us, we can't be naive that eventually we're going to run out of time. Uh, I think about that as well, too. I have a defibrillator, and eventually I have to figure out when I'm going to turn the defibrillator off, right? Uh, when, that, when that time comes for me, if I'm still alive, Nikki's looking scared right now, just me mentioning it. But in the process of time, those are decisions that have to be made, where you have to start thinking about that next journey is going to happen. Um, we can't be naive about it. We can't, we don't need to fear it, but that's how people respond. Many people fear death, and then many people ignore the reality of death. And so we need to make sure that we have the proper perspective. Um, and so the way that God wants us to respond, number one, he wants us to fear him and to keep his commandments. He wants us to abstain from fleshly lust and prepare. This world is not our home. And we're going to talk more about this point here. There needs to be an eager expectation of his return. So it's not something we have to dread, but it's something that we can look forward to uh, when it comes to his return. And we also need to be zealous of doing good deeds. There's going to be a way that we are going to have to live our lives. And so I conclude it by saying let's live like we're dying because one day we will die. And we need to be prepared for that, for that moment, for that time. And I know preachers say this. I've said it. Other people have said it. It could be today. And people knock on doors and they say, if you were to die today, where would you go? The reality is it could be. I hope it's not. But we need to make sure that we're living like we're dying because one day we will die. Thank you for your attention, for the questions. Lesson number two, Lord willing, next Sunday.